If you have ever asked yourself, what is house hacking exactly? That is what we are covering in today's video. I'm going to share the details of house hacking and how I was able to house hack to financial freedom. I am Tiffany Thomas, your wealth mentor. I achieved financial freedom in my 30s and became a millionaire at 40. I'm here to help you do that even earlier and easier. Let's dive right in. Let's first talk about what exactly house hacking is, and then I'm going to dive into more of the details on how I've been able to be successful with house hacking and how it helped me achieve financial freedom. When I first started house hacking, this term wasn't even out there. I just had roommates, that's all it was. Essentially, house hacking is living in one unit of a home and renting out the other unit, or just renting out rooms in your own home. That way you can turn your own home into an investment. And let's talk about the benefits of house hacking. The first benefit that I want to talk about is the cash flow that you create. You immediately see an increase in your income, not only the rental income that you are receiving, but you are also reducing your utilities if you are splitting the utilities with your roommate or your renter. All right, let's talk about the financial power of house hacking. When you're able to live in one side of your home, if you have a duplex, for example, if you live in one side and then you rent out the other side, you're able to create that cash flow for yourself, which means you can pay down your mortgage faster or even save up for another property to invest in or just have money to invest or travel or spend on whatever you would like to. And when you are house hacking, it doesn't mean that you have to own a duplex. You can definitely rent out your basement. Maybe you have a mother-in-law basement in your home, and so you can rent that out and create cash flow that way. Or you can do what I have done and have roommates. So I just rent out rooms in my home. But however you want to do it, it drastically increases your cash flow very quickly because you can charge quite a bit of money to rent a room and even more money to rent out even one side of a house or a full basement. For me personally, at one point I had three roommates and so I was collecting $1,730 every single month just from having roommates. And that was just the roommate income that I was receiving. I also split my utilities with my roommates. So that decreased the expenses I was paying in utilities because we split them evenly. So even if we were using a little more water or if we had the heater turned up more than I would normally use it, I was fine with that because we were all splitting the cost. So it would definitely be less for me to split that cost even though the heating bill would be a little bit higher than if I was just to pay that on my own. But let's just talk about if you have a home and you have extra bedrooms that you could rent out because that is how I have been able to house hack. There's kind of a bad rap for roommates a lot of the time. People will say they are hard to get along with or their roommates are super messy or they don't pay rent on time, just all sorts of problems. But honestly, from what I've seen, I have been very lucky, very blessed. I do realize that. But also I do have a strategy for when I'm looking for roommates. When I do the post online or wherever I'm posting it, I am very specific that it's for a clean home and we keep things clean and I'm upfront with the price and that they are splitting the utilities, how many people are already living there. And then also the standards that I expect in the home. I am pretty strict about my standards. There's no drinking, there's no drugs or smoking, no huge parties. Not that they can't throw a party and have people over, but I just have these higher standards. So I'm looking for a higher caliber of person, which in turn makes them easier to live with for me. And since it is my own place, I'm able to put these guidelines on who I'm looking for. And I also don't do any pets, especially when I had multiple roommates. If there was someone that was allergic to dogs and someone else was bringing in their dog, that would just be a problem. And just taking care of the pet and the pet being noisy, whatever it is, I don't do pets. And when they come to look at the place, I get a fill for them. I even sometimes walk them out to their car. I can see how messy or how clean their car is. And I'm asking them questions as I'm showing them the property. I'm asking them what they do for work, how long they've been there, kind of getting a fill for how stable their job is. 
And then I also ask them if they currently have roommates and that way I can see if they already have experience living with roommates or not. Just different questions that will help me to know if they're going to be a good roommate or not. And I'm also not charging the lowest price possible. I want someone that can afford to pay a little bit more and my places are definitely worth it. They're nice places, so I'm not trying to overcharge someone by any means. And then I definitely have them sign a contract when they move in. I want them to know exactly what they are responsible for and what I'm responsible for and there's no confusion later on. And I do have a friend that had someone move into her place and she had known that person before and so she didn't have her sign a contract. They just had a verbal agreement that the girl that was moving in would give her a 30 day notice, I think it was. But when the girl was ready to move out, I think she maybe gave a three day notice. And so it created some tension between those two girls. But there was nothing that my friend could do about it because they didn't have anything in writing. The more upfront we can be in the beginning of what the expectations are for roommates, then the better off we are going to be. And especially if we can put that all in writing. And if you are thinking, oh, well, I'm married and I have a kid. I don't know if I want random strangers living in my home. I totally understand that, but I want to share an experience with you. One of my previous roommates, she's now married, but the guy that she was dating and is now married to, he was actually roommates of a married couple with a kid and it worked out very well for their situation. He was actually able to babysit their kid occasionally if they were going out somewhere and they would make dinner for him sometimes. So that was a great situation for them. And of course you want to be very careful on who you're letting move into your home, especially if you have children, but it is doable because I have seen it happen and he was able to save a lot of money on his rent and they, the married couple, was also able to save money on their mortgage because they were able to rent out a room to him. And yes, most likely you will do some extra dishes and clean up some extra messes and some things may get broken. But for me, collecting an extra $17.30 every single month, it was worth it to do a few extra dishes and replace a pan that I think got broken or ruined and just little things here and there. The income that I was receiving was definitely worth that. Even if my pan cost $600, then I'm able to replace that pan with just one month's worth of rent from one tenant. And another benefit about having roommates is that you can make some new friends and have someone to go to parties with you or go to a movie with you, whatever it is that you're doing. If you become friends with your roommates, then you're able to hang out and do stuff together. And that has actually happened for me. There is a group of five of us. We have been friends for about 20 years and all of them at one point had been one of my roommates. And of course, I don't talk to all of my previous roommates, but I still do talk to at least these four other girls. And then there are a few other roommates that I still talk to and still do stuff with. So it's not always a bad situation. And now I want to move to creating your path to financial freedom through house hacking, because I feel like this is a really great way to do it. When I bought my very first property, I had two roommates that were living with me. And then I bought my second property and that was strictly a rental property. So I just put tenants in that property. But when I bought my third property, I ended up moving into that property, which meant I could have a lower down payment for that property and a lower interest rate than if it was just to strictly be a rental property. And when I moved in there, I left my old roommates at my first place and then I replaced myself there. So I was creating cash flow from that first property, even more cash flow. And then with my third property that I had moved into, I, in the beginning, I got one roommate and then I got two roommates and then I ended up finishing the basement. I moved into the basement and I was able to have three roommates living with me. And then I was able to purchase one more property. And the way I purchased that property was actually to take money from my stock market investments and put that toward a down payment for my property. So you can definitely invest in the stock market and in real estate. And if you are interested in getting started in the stock market, I have a free masterclass where I go over how I can help you do that. I will leave a link below in the description. You can click on that and check out the free masterclass. And I ended up moving into my fourth property later on. But if I was doing this all over again, I would definitely have my first property, have roommates in that property. And then my second property I would move into and that way I would have a lower down payment and I would leave my roommates in my first property, replace myself, 
and then I would get roommates in my second property and then I would do it again and again. It's really easy to do when you are single, that is for sure. But I have heard of a married couple that has done this very successfully. And they talked about this in the beginning when they had gotten married, they wanted to invest in real estate and house hack and build up their real estate empire that way. And by going into it, realizing that's what they were doing, they didn't accumulate a lot of stuff. So it wasn't as hard for them to move from place to place. And once you are doing that, you are creating cash flow every single time you are buying another property. And that way you can build up to have enough cash flow in order to become financially free. And I actually go over some numbers about this in another video. I will leave a link above. You can check it out later on. So really determine what your priorities are. And if you are willing to sacrifice a little bit in the short term, you don't have to do this for 30 years. But if you're able to do it for a short amount of time and start to build up your cash flow, then you are going to become financially free even sooner. Even if you decide not to continue to purchase properties in order to create enough cash flow to replace all of your expenses, you can at least have some of them taken care of. And if you do want more detail, I do have another video where I broke this down even further. I will leave a link to that above. You can check that one out later on as well. All right, comment below and tell me if you are going to house hack or not. And if you're not, tell me why, I want to know. And if you found this video helpful, please hit that like button and share it with someone else who would like to hear this information. And hit the subscribe button to subscribe to my YouTube channel and to the little bell to get notified when I post new videos. And if you wanna see even more amazing content from me, make sure and check out the videos on the side of the screen. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.